Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا تُوْعَدُونَ لَآتُ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ Sadaq Allahu Azim, that which you are promised will surely come and you will not escape. His promises are true. And he has promised that at the end of this time of distraction, of grazing, of looking around, of perplexity, there will be certainty. Worship your Lord until that which is certain, or certainty, comes to you. The usual meaning of this is that it is death, that uh, gateway which beckons all of us. That which you are promised is coming. Our instinct is, of course, to try and run away, as if that was possible as if we could avert the divine decree. The very word death, wafat, in Arabic means fulfillment. Yatawafakum malakul mawti ladhi wakila bikum. The angel of death which you have been entrusted to will bring you to the end of your term. That is our ajal, uh, and we are not mu'jizin, we will not escape it. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ mm. Say, truly the death which you are running away from will come to you and then you will be sent back to the one who knows that which was visible in you and that which was invisible and will tell you what you used to do. This is inescapable. Death and taxes, but some people do evade taxation, but even the super-rich don't evade death. Look at Maxwell, look at Epstein, look at so many others, titans in their age, all laid low. This is the sunnah of Allah in his creation, that everybody has his ajal, even the anbiya, the prophets who are the most beloved of creatures, they shall taste huh, the bitterness of death and shall go through that mysterious portal at exactly the moment that the Lord decrees. So in this time, we can either engage in wool gathering, collecting stuff, like so many other people nowadays who read books like a hundred things to do before you die, as if that was somehow going to help you at the time you do die. Uh, have you done base jumping? Have you climbed El Capitan? Have you traveled to New Zealand and Tahiti? Have you, have you, have you? Usually expensive, environmentally destructive things that are just goggling at a world whose source we no longer even dimly intuit. Uh, why do those hundred things before you die if you're not going to take them with you. But still, we run around uh, this way and that. Uh, so it is like uh, the poet said, The Asumani tu chubaran be bami alemi chak be hersui be davide be navi dan rafti. The poet here compares human souls coming down onto the world like raindrops falling on the clay roof of a traditional house. You run around in every direction like these raindrops, busily bouncing and cascading this way and that until you all go out through the same drain. That's where we will all exit. The same gutter will claim us all. Be silent, friend, from the pain of speaking. Say no more, because you are travelling into the embrace uh, of the beloved host. But that's how we are. We come down into the surface of this world and how busy we are, running this way and that. Hmm. But the end is coming. 
Laet. So in this time, while we're on this mysterious surface of things, trying to work things out, we usually don't do that at all well, even if we bother to try. Uh, we can think about where we're going, or we can be distracted by where we are. Most human beings choose the latter of those two because we're gravitational beings that like the easy route always. The path of least resistance is sweet and charming. But the Holy Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Kayisu Mandana Nefsahu wa Amila Lima Bad al Mot. Well I Jizu Man Atba a Nefsahu Hawaha Watamanda Allah. The intelligent person is the one who calls himself to account and acts for what is after death. And the loser, the useless person, is the one who allows his ego to follow its pleasures and just hopes for Allah's forgiveness. Tamanna. There's two kinds of hope. In Arabic there's raja and there's tamanni. Raja is the hope that we experience when Allah describes his mercy to us and tells us about the infinitude of his gardens and about the beauty which awaits us if we are to experience that grace and forgiveness from for our Creator. How could we not hope for that? But at the same time, there is another human hope, perhaps more common, which the Arabic language calls tamanni, which means a vain hope. I'm going to do X, but I hope that Y will be the result. I'm going to do this and hope against hope. It may be hopeless. I'm going to buy a scratch card and do the lottery and take these risks and I hope it will be all right. I'm going to drive down the M11 at 110 miles an hour and I hope that things will be all right. This is reprehensible hope. This is tamanni. This is an abuse of human reason and of dependence on the Creator. Tawakkul, reliance on God, doesn't mean you just sit back as if religion was some armchair of promises and just let things take their course. No. The Holy Prophet وسلم, tells his Sahaba, Hal min mushammirin lil jannah? Ala inna jannata la khatara laha? Is there anyone here who will roll up his sleeves for paradise? Paradise has no like. Nahnu mushammiruna laha. Ya Rasulullah, they say, we are the ones who will roll up their sleeves for it, Ya Rasulullah. You roll up your sleeves when you're about to do a job of work, when you're about to sweat, to make an effort, to sacrifice, not just sit around watching something meaningless, but actually to go out to the garden shed, pick up your tools and fix something. Do something with your afternoon. Don't just tamanna ala Allah, hope that Allah will sort it out. No, human agency is real, we experience it as real, we are required to act. And this is why the believer does not fear death. Not really. Whatever state the world may be in at present, the Holy Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the extraordinary hadith narrated by Tirmidhi, Tuhfatul Mu'min al Maut. Uh, death is the precious gift to the believer. If he's really a believer, and he's rolled up his sleeves, and he's actually got on with making something of every moment of his life while not thinking that his actions will save him, only Allah saves, but at least he is responding and obeying the divine call, putting himself in the way of that grace, even if he can't guarantee it. He's putting himself in the way of the rain, even though he can't make it fall. That that individual, when death comes, it's a gift. Look at the two who were in the cave. Thani athnan ithuma fil ghar. The second of the two, Thaniyath Nain, they were in the cave. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was afraid the night of the long knives, the Quraysh, the posse, they were out to kill them. Uh, but he says to his companion, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be grieved, Allah is with us. They were facing death. Uh, nobody around to support them. Sayyidina Sumayya and others coming by night, <coughs> but the situation looked bleak. Islam in Mecca seemed to have been defeated. Some of the Sahaba had already lost their lives, and the others chased out into a far and seemingly hopeless exile. Uh, but he is with his friend, uh, 
And in the poem, Shaykh al-Islam Abdullah Quilliam writes about this, that he has the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam consoling Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, saying, will he we live, no mortal power can take our lives away. Will he we die, to him we pass, no need to feel dismay. And this is the la tahsan, do not be grieved. Huh? If you live and you survive, there is more opportunity for experiencing the wonders of God's world, which is all his signs, opportunities to serve him, to serve humanity. It's khair, it's good. If your ajal has been determined for this time, that is also from the divine decree, and it is also to be accepted. Uh, to him we pass, no need to feel dismay. You're going on to the embrace of that beloved friend. What's wrong with that? So the believer, to the extent that he has iman, the mu'min, is not really afraid. La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahsanun. There is no fear upon them, neither do they grieve. He accepts al qadar hulwihi wa murrihi the divine decree, the bitter and the sweet of it, because he knows that it comes from his beloved, from his Lord, the one whose disposition of all things is always in a state of complete perfection. And this is ridha. And ridha, which means to be contented with Allah's decree, is a state of happiness, not of fear or misery. If you accept that only Allah's decree can come about, you'll be fine. Man amana bil qadar, Amina min al qadar. Whoever believes in qadar, Allah's decree of things, he is safe from stress, from any kind of inner turbulence, because he knows that everything is under control. Wa ilallahi tasirul umur. All matters go back to Allah. So the believer fears his bad actions, fears his times of distraction, fears that his tawbah may not be adequate, uh, but the believer hopes in his Lord. He has the raja, and his Lord has said that he is Arham al rahimin the most merciful of the merciful. So those who in the month of Ramadan and in this season and in this time uh, pass on through the curtain of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described himself as the most just and as the most merciful. Chunan yari mehriban rafti, who would not wish to go on to the most generous and the most just and away from the injustices and the suffering and the pain and the turbulence and the qadar of this world. So this is the affair of the believer. Ajab al mu'min. Amazing is the state of the believer. And the believers, the awliya, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. No fear comes upon them, neither do they grieve. They do not fear the future, that's in Allah's hands, and therefore the future is good. Rahma, adala, correctness, appropriateness, rightness. And the past, also in his hands. And it can't be fixed. What's gone is gone. And we look forward, not to the outcome of our actions, which are muddy, inadequate, distracted things, but on to the one who has called himself Arham al-Rahimin, Akram al-Akramin, Rabbil Alameen. Say so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of those who are taken back to him in this blessed month of Ramadan and accept all of their actions according to their best intentions and overlook everything that they did that was uh, in violation of his command and his law and help us to be people of sunnah and istiqama and uh, rightness, inshallah, in this time of distraction and of confusion and of fear.